Hey guys, so I uh, finally convinced Eric to make a trip to one of my favorite wood stores today so that hopefully we can get started on a new kitchen project. And that project is actually redoing our lower kitchen cabinets. Now, I know some of you are gonna wonder why we're even redoing them when they're in good condition, and they are. They're in decent condition, and I do like the two-tone look with the white uppers and the uh, black lowers. But let me give you a little bit of a backstory. So back when we bought our RV, I knew there were gonna be a lot of renovation projects, including the kitchen, and I was really excited to use some sort of rustic reclaimed wood for the cabinets, but the kitchen was in pretty good condition and the cabinet doors were in good condition. And so, to be honest, I was really struggling because I was so concerned with what I thought other people's expectations um, would be that I got in my head a little too much and let that dictate what my decision was and that was to actually paint the cabinets rather than replace them so my second choice if i wasn't going to be using some sort of rustic wood in here was to do a two-tone look and i hadn't seen it done in any rv before so i wasn't really sure how it would turn out but i was all about taking a risk and kind of seeing how it would look and i was like you know what it's paint if i don't like it i can change it so i painted the uppers white and if you've read our blog, you may already know that I really wanted to paint the lowers black. Well, again, people were telling me, you know, you don't want to put black in an RV because it's going to make it look too dark and it's going to make it look a lot smaller. And I was like, you know what, maybe they're right. So I went a little bit safer and I painted the lowers gray, uh, but I really didn't love it. It, it just, it, I just didn't love it. But I was like, you know, maybe I'll just kind of, uh, keep it and see maybe I'll, maybe it'll grow on me you know uh which it didn't <laughs> and uh soon after we painted the cabinets there ended up uh being a water leak in the ceiling from the skylight which had cracks in it in the bathroom so we ended up having to replace the ceiling panels in the bathroom and in the kitchen and when we did that we also had to remove the upper cabinets and at that point i was like you know what i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna repaint these lower cabinets black because that's what i want and i was so happy i did that because i was really excited about the kitchen afterwards and I loved the way it looked so uh, my advice to you is if you really want to do something um, you know it's good to listen to the opinions of other people but don't let that outweigh what you really love because it's your space and you're gonna be living in it and you want to love it it's been a couple years and while I love our kitchen and it's definitely served us well I'm really excited for a change and to be honest I'm itching for a project Eric and I haven't really had a good project to work on in a while so I think this is gonna be really fun um, but we're about to head out to the wood store I already got all of the measurements so we know how much wood we're gonna need and hopefully we'll be able to find Find what we're looking for. All right, so here we are. We're back at the RV. We do have, uh, we did get our wood from California Hardwoods in Auburn, California. Um, here's some of it we have laid out. Uh, now, these pieces, for the most part, have uh, actually been playing down because while we were there, we actually got to talk with Chris, who's one of the owners there. Um, a really cool guy. If you guys are in Auburn, you should definitely go check it out. I mean, we had a blast just looking through all the wood. Um, but he was actually nice enough to plane down some of it for us and uh, looking back on it hindsight's 2020 and uh, Katie sites 2020 as well She suggested that we actually have all the wood plane down and uh, I didn't think that was a good idea because some of it We're going to be using for the drawers uh, on the cabinets and I thought the thicker pieces would be good But looking back on it, we should have just planed it all anyway We didn't and here we are so we do have our plane pieces which we're actually going to be using these in order to to do the uh, side sections of our lower cabinets and then the unplaned wood like I said we're going to be using for the drawers as well as we're going to build some new cabinet doors for under the sink but uh, it is getting pretty late today so I don't know how much of this we're going to get done but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, dive in so the boards you're seeing here we actually took a uh, wire brush and kind of went over the top now, the reason we didn't sand it is because we really love the patina it has on it and we didn't want to lose uh, as much of the texture really. So we decided to skip sandpaper and use the wire brush, which we think worked really well. 
And then after we did that, we went ahead and took our steamer and went over the wood as well. Uh, just give it like a, a little slight cleaning that doesn't take away too much, but also really does a good job by using uh, the steam to do it. Um, so anyway, we've got it wire brushed down, we steamed it. So uh, now we're gonna step inside and we're gonna go remove some things and then uh, go ahead and get our measurements and start uh, putting the wood up on the cabinets. So real quick, actually, before we jump inside, I did want to show you guys something pretty cool. And that's like the front. It looks awesome, right? You can definitely feel that there's a history behind this board, uh, which we really love. And we actually really love where you can see the brackets that used to be up there. Um, but anyway, what's also really cool is that as I flip it around here, what you'll see is the back where it was planed and what it would have originally looked like when they used it for the very first time. So it's just crazy to see um how much uh being outside in a weathered look can really change the wood and add it that much character that much more character um anyway let's go do this all right so the first thing we're going to get done before doing any measuring or anything is removing our handrail and also removing our uh, switch cover and our little stairway light here uh, that way we'll be able to see where the gaps are and where we need to cut our wood so that we can go ahead and make sure that we can put these items right back where they go but anyway let's get started man down Now our rail is removed. Now that we have everything moved and out of the way, we can go ahead and start getting our measurements and move on to cutting the wood. Alright, so here is piece number one. Now, to be honest, the wood was just a little bit too thick to sink up underneath our overhang on our countertop. So I did take a sander and just kind of sand down the back side of the top so that it would fit up underneath there. And there it is, like a glove. Time to nail it in. I suppose we should make sure it's perfectly in position first. And our first plank is installed. Hey, McNally. Hello, buddy. Hello, cutie. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. You want to help Dad do this? Huh? You want to help Dad install the rustic on the side? Okay, got to get back to work. We're losing sunlight. We're losing sunlight, buddy. You got to sit. Sit. High five. Good boy. All right, now that we got the sides all wrapped up, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the kitchen drawers. Now we're starting with the larger ones, which is on, which are on the far right-hand side. And there's a couple things I wanna note before we go forward. Uh, number one is that uh, when you're taking these out, 
you're going to notice that in your sliding brackets there's these little black things now depending on how they were installed some of them are upside down some of them are this way but what you want to do is pull up if it's on the downside and down if it's on the upside but you want to pull both sides at the same times and then release um, i know that when we first started taking drawers out a long time ago it was really tricky to get that figured out but anyway that's a side note Another side note is before we pop off these front pieces, it's important to know where your drawers line up in regards to the actual drawer. So we went ahead and measured from the top to the top of here and from the side to the top of here on both sides. That way when we place down our new pieces of wood on here, we can line it up with the same distance to make sure that once we install all three of our drawers, they're all lined up perfectly. Now anyway, the next step is to go ahead and remove this piece, and uh, it's kind of tricky. Um, sometimes it works good, sometimes not. Over here you can see one where we already have it removed. Um, but here you can see that I have my mallet. Um, and once in a while you'll get real lucky, and it's attached by staples. So once in a while you'll give it a good tap with your mallet and the piece will just come off. Sometimes you may have to grab a small flathead screwdriver or a tiny crowbar and wedge it in there to loosen it up before it pops off, but we'll see how this one works. Look at that, it's an easy one for the example. So uh, just like that, the drawer front is removed and uh, we've already got our pieces cut down we're gonna cut our pieces down here in a second but first we need to remove these staples now in the past I've tried to actually hold them steady and hammer them back through and pull the staple out entirely um, but that can be a real pain and with all the repeated pounding of the hammer trying to nail it out it can loosen up these bonds on the sides so what I'm doing instead is taking a pair of wire or wire cutters or you know whatever these are and I'm gonna go ahead and cut them off at the top and I'm gonna hold the two staple pieces so they don't fly all over the place and then toss them in the trash now you don't have to worry about holding the staple ends real tight you just need to hold them kind of so that they don't fly all over the place now, as you can see on here, I do have little uh, tidbits of staples poking through, so I will take my hammer now and just nail those down to get them as flat as possible. Alrighty, so there, that drawer front is removed. So now we have two removed, and we'll go ahead and get to removing the last one, and then we'll cut down our new pieces, and uh, we'll show you how we do that. We got our drawer pieces cut down and uh, as you can see we're using two separate pieces here now the two together are actually bigger than what we need so what we're going to do is we're going to use our measurements we took from before uh, to get the proper placement for the top piece uh, we're going to make little lines on here and then position it give it a couple nails just to hold it and once we've done that we'll take our second piece and attach it via nails then from the top, we're gonna to measure down to the right size that we need, creating a line all the way across so that we can go ahead and cut off the access and have boards uh, on here as our new drawer fonts. But anyway, let's go ahead and measure our markings. So now I'm making my line so I know how much to cut off. All right, as you can see here, we have all of our wood attached to our drawers. Now, these are the three large drawers on the right-hand side. We do have four others that we need to complete, but we're gonna be following the same process. So we'll just show you what that looks like at the end. Um, but uh, here, once we got these on, we cut off the bottom edges to make sure that they were the right size. Uh, and then after we did that, we obviously had clean looking wood on the side. So we did a quick uh, staining on all of the sides where we sawed so that it kind of looks and melds in better with the top. 
Now, from here on, all that's left to do is we're gonna use a clear water-based poly in order to seal all the cabinets. Um, and before that, I actually already went ahead with a 400 grit sandpaper and just lightly sanded it. Um, and then we'll add the poly. And then after that, all we need to do is add the hardware and we'll be good to go. All right, so we actually had to go back to California hardwoods, which actually ended up being a blessing in disguise because when we first got our wood, we left some of it unplaned because we wanted to use that for the cab for the drawers in the cabinet. Um, and then we wanted to use the plain wood for both the sides. Now, the thing was is that when we went to start making the cabinet doors, we realized we didn't have enough wood left. So we actually took the wood we had left back, got it plain, picked up a couple new pieces of board, uh, wood, and then went ahead and had those planed as well. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna gotta go ahead and cut out the sizes for our cabinets out of our MDF. And then we're gonna cut the boards down to size, put them on top, attach them, and then we'll have new cabinet doors that match our new drawers and our sides of our cabinets. All right, and there's our finished template. Alright, so there's our templates. They're all cut out into size. We're actually going to paint them black. That way, once we attach the wood, if there's any knot holes or any cracks that you could see through, it would be black behind it versus this tan color that would kind of show out a little bit. And then if you look over here to the right, here is our wood. And what we're going to do is we're going to start cutting and we're going to cut 27 and 3 quarters, which is the length. And then uh, we'll make the first door and then we'll use what we have left to make the second. So we have our wood cut down to the right length and over here we have our MDF cut out to the perfect template for our cabinet door. Um, as you can see this is black now, that was the original color there. Um, but we found some hammered black spray paint just lying around and since you're not going to see this, um, we decided just to go ahead and coat it with that. Uh, that way when we put this on here with the little holes you won't really be able to see anything because it's black. Now on the back we are going to finish it actually with a nice black paint that will roll on so to look more finished and better um, but for this side it doesn't really matter but anyway let's go ahead and line this up and then uh, we'll get it all finished up There it is. All right, here you can see we have a bit of excess excess wood hanging off here. So we're gonna take our circular saw and we're gonna cut right along the edge and remove that so that it's uh, good to go. A bigger roller might be easier, but we had this one on hand, so we figured might as well use what we got. All right, so we got our new cabinet doors all sealed and ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and head inside, start installing the hardware on the drawers, getting the handrail back up, and then getting these all installed and looking good, and then we'll show you what it looks like. All right, here we are. Our lower kitchen cabinets are all finished up and we're absolutely thrilled with the way that they turned out, uh, especially considering we were using the reclaimed wood where none of the dimensions are the same. And at the same time, I have about half the tools that I would have if we were say still in our house. So really pleased with the way it turned out. Uh, there are a couple things that we wanna note here though. And one is that we did get our reclaimed wood from a local lumber yard. And that's because we wanted to go local for this project. Um, but that 
that did require us to do a little bit of cleaning. But what's great is that there's so many options out there, even online options now, where you can get the reclaimed wood where it's already cleaned up, even kiln dried. So just something to keep in mind if you're gonna be taking on a project like this. Now, the other thing is that whenever you're designing something, every decision you make is gonna have an effect on another decision. Um, so for instance, when we went ahead and decided that we were gonna redo the lower cabinets with the reclaimed wood, we knew that it may clash with our hardwood flooring countertop. Now, for now, we think it looks okay and we're gonna go ahead and roll with it, but in the future, we may end up redoing the countertop so that it flows a little bit better. So anyway, if you're doing your own renovation, just keep that in mind, each decision has has an effect on the next decision. Um, but anyway, speaking of the countertops real quick, we are gonna be coming out with a video here soon where we touch on the pros and cons of our countertop, uh, as well as let you know kind of how it's been holding up after about two years. And as always, you can cruise over to the website, mountainmodernlife.com. We do have a post on our lower kitchen cabinets and how we went about it. So definitely check that out. I will put a link in the description box as well. But anyway, that about wraps it up. We really hope this video was helpful, uh, whether helping you decide if you should do this or shouldn't do this. Either way, we hope it was helpful and we really appreciate you guys swinging by watching our video. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you again soon.